Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. I'm Brian McDaniel and I will be your guide on this journey through the list of the highest yield material for the section covering cell injury, cellular stress, and an introduction to cancer. I've already made about eight videos in this section which cover each of the topics in detail. This video is just a supplemental list of which topics are the most important. In this video, we're just going to list the topics from the most important for the USMLE Step 1 Medical Board exam all the way down to the least important. Uh, if you want to learn more about the high yield rating score, uh, how it's determined or uh, how to interpret it, uh, you can click on this orange box here if you are watching on a computer or just go to my website and there's a page called about the high yield rating. So we'll start here with the highest yield topic in this section, uh, metastasis, uh, spreading of the cancers. So questions are most likely to focus on uh, locations where certain types of cancers spread most often. Uh, you also may have to differentiate between a primary and a secondary uh, cancer based on some sort of clinical scenario. You want to know which types of cancers tend to spread more via the lymphatic system versus uh, the blood and how metastasis can alter prognosis overall. Next up with the high yield rating of eight, uh, we have free radicals. You want to know the main enzymes and the free radicals that they either create or destroy. You should focus on the free radicals and the enzymes, which have some sort of clinical correlation. You're most often gonna see questions on chronic granulomatous disease, but you'll also see things like uh, reperfusion injuries after MI or myeloperoxidase deficiency. Also with the high yield rating of eight is necrosis. You may have some general questions on what necrosis is, but most of the questions on necrosis are gonna ask you to differentiate between the different subtypes of necrosis based on either a clinical scenario or some sort of text description of the histologic appearance. Fat necrosis, liquefactive necrosis, and coagulative necrosis are the most commonly tested, so I would focus on those. In these types of questions, you may also see uh, the occasional picture, most often gonna be like a gross anatomy picture of say pancreas with saponification for fat necrosis or a cross section of a kidney with a wedge shaped pale area of coagulative necrosis. Another high yield topic is going to be differentiating between reversible and irreversible cellular injury in this case, you're usually gonna to have to differentiate between the two based on sort of what's going on the cellular level. So reversible can have things like cellular swelling, uh, increased sodium in the cell, and decreased ATP. While irreversible would have more things like increased calcium and activation of caspases. Cellular adaptions are gonna get a high yield rating of seven, so this is this is most commonly gonna be metaplasia, but you can also see some questions on atrophy, hyperplasia, and hypertrophy. So you just wanna know when these different things arise uh, based on some sort of increased or decreased cellular stress. And like most things, the types of cellular adaptions that have some sort of clinical correlation, such as Barrett's esophagus, are gonna show up more commonly in the test questions. Also with the high yield rating of seven is apoptosis. So you wanna know the cascade that leads to apoptosis. You wanna know how apoptosis uh, interacts with some of the different oncogenes and tumor suppressors. You wanna differentiate between apoptosis and necrosis based on a clinical scenario or a description. The high yield rating of five, amyloidosis. The most commonly tested one will be AA amyloidosis, but AL amyloidosis and the beta amyloid plaques in Alzheimer's are also important. Then we have the cell cycle. So you wanna know the diff different stages and what occurs during each stage. 
and then how different tumor suppressors and oncogenes can alter the cell cycle. Now we're getting into the lower yield material uh, that's still worth, worth looking at. We have P53 tumor suppressor. You want to know how it's related with a lot of cancers and how it can interact with the cell cycle. BCL2 oncogene. You want to know its relationship with the apoptosis cascade and a couple specific types of cancers that it may be related to. The MYC oncogene, you want to know a couple of specific cancers it's related to, like Burkitt's lymphoma. And then the RB tumor suppressor, you want to know its relationship to the cell cycle and uh, specific cancers where you might see that altered. And we have the HER2 new oncogene. You want to know how it uh, correlates with breast cancer and tyrosine kinase. We have E6 and E7. You want to know how these are oncogenes related with HPV. And then we have uh, BRCA1 and 2 tumor suppressors that you want to know how they relate to breast cancer. Lastly, we have the section of things I call no yield. These are topics which are much less likely to show up on the exam. So I don't suggest putting much time into studying these topics unless you've already mastered all of the higher yield material. Um, I'm not going to read out all these for you, but I will flash these next couple pages up and uh, you can either press pause or check the video description for a list. And here's the rest of that list of the no yield material. I want to send a big thanks to Nixie from Pittsburgh and Renata from Brazil. They both went to my website stomponstep1.com and made a donation that helped bring this video to you all. I'd also like to ask that if you found this video useful, uh, please do comment below. It really helps me out. And if you would like to watch the actual videos that go into each of these topics, you can click on this black box here to be taken to the first video, which is going to be about uh, cellular stress and cellular adaptions. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with the rest of your studying.